Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show, powered by SoundCraft Studios. Visit online at soundcraftstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCraft Studios is the answer. SoundCraft Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundcraftstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zeers got great reviews in Eve 11 endorsed by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manils. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. Who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever you get for grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw, Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com. Also on amazon.com at the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, including great books by me and Molson Zia, check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon and make sure you purchase today. And don't forget to uh, support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM. Also on PayPal at the Mike Widener Show or Mike Widener VoiceOver. And don't forget to uh, give generously at the themikewidenershow.com. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific filmmaker, photographer from the uh, Toronto area who, um, whose film, Liminal, is going to be competing in the Dances with Films at the Hollywood Chinese uh, TLC Theater. He spent his childhood in Israel and adulthood in Canada, and he won a Canadian Comedy Award for Netflix, Ben's at Home. And um, this movie we're going to talk about played at the Holly, Holly Shorts, The Rain Dance, Best Short at the Canadian Film Fest, and... Um, also, uh, he's also done some other work like Beauty and the Beast, Max and Shred, and also Murdoch Mysteries, and um, also um, Wayne, The Detail, and a lot more. And this guy is just an award-winning and very terrific. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from Plus Studios, on the road, uh, somewhere outside Toronto. And ladies and gentlemen, filmmaker, photographer, the very, very multi-talented Dan Abramovici. Dan, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Wow, such a such an intro. Thank you very much. Well, he, he got some great work as well, too. I mean, you won a Canadian and Comedy Award for Netflix Band at Home, and your film Liminal got played at the Holly Shorts, Rain Dance, and the Best Short at the Canadian Film Fest. You also had some experience like Wayne, The Detail, Play It Again, and a lot more. And you've been doing this for quite some time. We'll be talking about the movie Liminal as well, too. But first of all, before getting to all that, Dan, um, tell us how I first got started. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, I first got started as an actor. And uh, as an actor, you're spending a lot of time waiting, hoping that your agent calls you with a part, going to auditions. Maybe you're right for the part. Maybe you're not. And I kind of found that for my own sanity, really, and, you know, solid mental health, uh, the best thing to do was to write my own work. So I started off doing sketch comedy. I um I did improv with Second City and, and that led to, to sketch comedy on stage. We then filmed some of those sketches, turned them into short films. They got on the festival circuit and kind of one thing led to another. And as I learned to write, began to kind of direct and produce my own work. Uh, yeah, that's what led to Ben's at Home, which uh, was a feature length comedy we did a couple of years ago. And then... Uh, with Liminal, uh, that's my first time really behind the camera as a director. Wow, that is something. And of course, that's a very interesting project. We'll talk more about that. And what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? 
<laughs> uh, do you mean when did I decide to transition to kind of writing my own work? Well, it can be either like, you know, you started, um, you know, you know, in the industry in general or directing or, you know, whatever angle you want to take. What was that one precise moment sure. you simply said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Sure. I mean, I think when I moved to, uh, to Canada from Israel, um, it was in the fourth grade. I didn't really know. I didn't, not really. I mean, I didn't know any English at all. And really my, my first friends for the first couple of years were characters in films and TV that I watched, mm -hmm. which uh, maybe sounds a little bit sad, but it didn't feel that way because, you know, I was really struck by that transportive power of, of cinema. And, uh, I kind of knew then that I really wanted to be a part of that world. Uh, someone who is a part of telling these stories and creating these characters that, you know, touch people in their lives in some way. I, I didn't know then if I was going to be an actor or, or a director or a writer. I just knew I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and kind of the, the first steps that I took were, you know, as an actor, doing funny voices and, and sketches at school, making people laugh. As a, as a skinny kid who's not very athletic, kind of that was my way to assert myself rather than, uh, you know, baseball or football or hockey. That was not going to happen. For me. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned about doing some funny voices. And uh, what are some of the funny voices you could do? And if you want to do a few, that's fine, too. If not, hey, we understand. It sounds pretty, sounds pretty good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look. Right now, all I have for you is uh, the stars up from us, precious. <gasps> so there you go. <laughs> oh my God, you scared me. Oh boy, I'm afraid of that guy. That precious. Oh, okay. Here's the ring. Here's the ring. Get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, for obvious reasons, I didn't go into full-on voice work, but uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was in uh, in elementary school, that that was kind of a way into social situations is do voices, imitate Saturday Night Live sketches, get people laughing. And um, that built the confidence to then go take acting class, get better. And then you find out, oh, there's a lot more to it. But at its core, it's play. It's fun. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. And it does sound like fun as well, too. And uh, who are some of your favorite actors, sing um, actors, actresses, and uh, your favorite movies and TV shows growing up? I mean, I think the, the, the films that kind of really uh, helped me find my, or, or, you know, sort of created a, a guide for kind of what I want to do in my film work are films like Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Mm -hmm. um, that comes to mind. Um, Birdman recently. Uh, I, I find myself being more drawn to films that combine, you know, a, a real world sensibility and, and uh, very intimate and fleshed out relationships with some element of, of surreal or like a dreamlike logic that then maybe paints a, a, a broader picture. And, uh, really surprises and delights the viewers in a way that, yeah, it's, it's hard to come across. Mm -hmm. and, and you sound like you do a pretty good job of it as well, too. And um, we'll also talk about um, your, your uh, movies as well, too, like Friends at Home, Wayne, The Detail, and a few others. And um, you also talk about Liminal in just a few minutes. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Whitener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. 
Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and evil love and enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Z. Available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by a picture of this photo box where remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift for grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw. Picture this photo box at 646-798-0809. That's 646-798-0809. Or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first quarter. Picture this photo box. Bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com and also on amazon.com under the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon for great books and great merchandise. Check out amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. And don't forget to support us on Anchor FM, PayPal at paypal.com, Mike Widener Show or Mike Widener voiceover. And don't forget to uh, support generously Send generous donation to the MikeWidenerShow.com. Make sure you do so today. We're here, filmmaker and photographer um, Dan Abramovici here on the Mike Widener Show. We'll be talking about Liminal in just a minute. And um, before we talk some of the movies, like um, we covered uh, Ben's at Home. Also, um, we'll talk about Wayne, The Detail, Play It Again. And you also have another upcoming um, feature as well, too. Um, tell us about your journey going from uh, Israel in your childhood to, uh, to uh, currently where you're at in uh, Canada. I mean, um, we, we left Israel, my family, around the time of the Gulf War, so 1991. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, I remember a very happy childhood in Israel set against the backdrop of, like, Scud missiles falling, which kind of in retrospect now is, is, is a little weird. But, I mean, you know, that, that's what we knew to be normal then, so playing soccer on an empty street because there's like a siren going off and telling my, my parents that I'm uh, at my friend's bunker. Meanwhile, he tells his parents that he's at mine. Um, you know, that was kind of, kind of the thing for a couple, for, uh, for, for the formative years of my childhood. Um, but uh, it was a really happy childhood in Israel. Uh, we moved to Canada. It was the first time I encountered snow and bitter cold. Oh, wow. Um, you know, but that's been an, a, a wonderful transition as well. It's a very, very different culture. But, um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't think of a better place. Mm -hmm. and, and how so is like a different culture compared to uh, Israel and uh, currently in Canada? You mentioned about a uh, different culture. I mean, in, in terms of like kind of a cultural comparison between Canada and Israel? Correct, yes. Oh, uh, man, I think, I guess, in, 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 you know, anybody's adulthood in Israel is, is set against the backdrop of being in a sense of some danger. You know, you, you have to go to the army. You, you know that you're kind of isolated geographically. Um, and you have to kind of grow up fast and speak your mind and insert yourself. I really don't know if I'm qualified to be talking about this, but, uh, no, you're, Canada, no, you're, you're good. You're good. Well, you know, being, being in Canada, you don't really have to worry about stuff like that. You have, to, you're safe and secure no matter what, you know, you, you, you have that, Kind of backdrop of, uh, of of free healthcare and no real sense of any kind of physical danger, um, but maybe in doing so, in, in living that life, you don't have the sense of urgency that you might have in your day to day in Israel. I sorry, Mike. I don't know if that was uh, if that was a good kind of cultural analysis. I'll have to I'll have to think about that and maybe uh, pick that up with you. 
Hey, hey, that, hey, that's no problem. I think you summed up pretty good, Dan. You did a really good job with that. And of course, you know, you'd be in Canada as well, too. And uh, you also um, got into your uh, filmmaking career as well, too. And, um, you know, you t- we talked a little bit about um, Ben's at Home. And uh, you also did Wayne, The Detail, Play It Again. You're also involved with uh, Beauty and the Beast. Max and Shred, Murdoch Mysteries, and Man Seeking uh, Woman. And uh, tell us about uh, some of the movies and projects you're in. And uh, if there's anything else um, in the pipeline we haven't mentioned, uh, feel free to talk about as well. Sure. Well, I mean, uh, the, the projects you, you mentioned just now, uh, most of them are, are acting roles I've had. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I still work as an actor um, in Toronto, uh, although I am looking to kind of expand to American projects as well. Um, But my focus these days really is on uh, writing and directing. And so um, Liminal is really the first time that I can say that I've done a film fully in my own voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Play It Again, which you mentioned, that's an up and coming uh, short film that uh, we're hoping to premiere pretty soon. I had the pleasure of, of directing my very, very uh, talented and wonderful girlfriend in that she plays the, the lead role of Kitty in, in that film. But we're, we're still waiting for a, for a premiere. It's an LGBTQ uh, comedy with a little bit of a nod to uh, the classic film Casablanca. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so waiting for a festival to premiere that. But um, Liminal is, is, is now uh, kind of the the focus in that we're, we're finishing up a festival run that included uh, playing Holly shorts, uh, rain dance. We did premiere with um, a best short win at Canada film fest. Um, but the entire festival run has been under the uh, auspice of, uh, of the pandemic. So everywhere we've gone has been virtual. Um, this Sunday, we're going to be uh, playing in Hollywood at the TLC Chinese theater. And then we have a couple more festival dates lined up. Um, Really hope that people check it out. Um, If listeners are not able to check it out live in the theater, by all means, reach out. I'm Dan Abramovici on Instagram. Happy to send you a link. And and ultimately what we're looking for with this festival run is collaborators. I mispronounced that, collaborators. We have um, a couple of short films in the work as well as two features. Um, Liminal is a a bit of a proof of concept for a feature film that I'm working on. And I'm looking to connect with like-minded people, with filmmakers, producers, investors, uh, distributors, um, and and just trying to tell more stories and create more stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll definitely do that as well, too. And uh, we'll talk more about Liminal and um, some upcoming works by Dan Abramovici. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at soundcloudstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Also brought to you by a picture of this full book, Remembering is a key ingredient. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. We'll be back with filmmaker and photographer Dan Abramovici with Liminal after this timeout. Three, two, one. We're back with uh, Dan Abramovici of Liminal here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, tell us more about the film and uh, what's that about. Explains uh, relationships, self-identity, and more. And, um, and, and uh what, what first inspired you to uh, create uh, Liminal? Give us a little background about that. Sure. Well, um, I, I wanted to, I've, I've done a couple of short films prior to Liminal, and I really wanted with Liminal to, yeah, try to push myself as a filmmaker and as a storyteller. I'm, I'm very interested in dance and theater, movement, circus, um, and other ways of telling a story uh, trying to communicate a story that maybe I could not say with words in, in the short runtime of, runtime of the film. So I wanted to, to make a film where we can see between the kind of real lived in world, conversational grounded reality to something a little bit more abstract, a little bit more surreal without breaking the reality of the story. I, I didn't want it to be like, 
okay, now we're going into like a dance performance. I wanted to tie it into um, the story and make it feel like one organic piece. Um, and, and the crux of the story, it's about uh, a man named, the character's name is Steve, who finds that he kind of lives his life like a revolving door. He's unable to commit to his family life. He's also unable to commit to the affair that he's embarked on and, you know, his own sexual identity. So his life is a sort of revolving door that through the course of the film and kind of his inability to commit to his own authentic self becomes a sort of a meat grinder. And elements of dance and movement um, and shadow work uh, all, all play a part in kind of giving us a sense of what this man's inner life is like so we're, we're trying to really put you in his head in a film that feels like one long take with our central character going through this kind of cycle did that make any sense at all i hope so it, it actually does make sense and what do you want the uh the, the viewers to uh to get out of this film you know i mean i think so for me uh when when I listen to a piece of music, like I, I I do hate when when I find out the singer's intent because I you know I, I I feel the way I do from from the melody from from all that. So I, I hope that the that the viewer enjoys it. I hope it moves them in in some way. Um, in terms of themes, it's about fidelity. It's about living your life authentically. It's about you know going after what you want instead of letting life kind of pass you by passively um but yeah i, I hope i hope i hope people enjoy it and make them feel something that's really all i could ask for as a filmmaker mm -hmm. and it sounds amazing as well too and where can we find uh liminal and all your works at well, uh, Liminal is going to play at the Dances with Film Festival this coming Sunday at four o'clock as a part of the International Shorts uh, program. Um, after that, we're going to be playing Bend Film in um, Oregon. We're going to be playing uh, Bolton in England. But if you can't be physically at a festival, you can always reach out to me through my website at danabramovici.com or on Instagram. And um, yeah. I can connect you with a link and, and we can chat. Sounds great. Okay. We're here with a filmmaker, photographer of uh, Liminal, Dan Abramovich, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And uh, just a few more minutes. And uh, by the way, you also have an upcoming um, feature called uh, Spaceman. And uh, tell us about that. Yeah. So um, I'm working on a film right now uh, called Spaceman. It's a, it's a short film. It's a bit of a companion piece to Liminal. So actually, uh, I saw this incredible mime at a fringe show here in Canada. Uh, the mime's name is Trevor Cop, and he's kind of one of the, the last young torchbearers of that form of art. Um, mm -hmm. And he did a uh, fringe show called Searching for Marceau that blew me away. It was an mm -hmm. incredible one-man show. Unlike what you might think of traditional mime, you know, he, he does talk and, and just builds this whole world with just his movement. Um, I reached out to him, showed him Liminal, and uh, we decided to collaborate. So I wrote this piece called Spaceman, which really is about um, imposter syndrome. It's about a person who kind of rediscovers his love for what he does, which in this case is mime. And I wanted on that film to see how I can cinematically show off mime. Uh, and and uh, hopefully build that towards a feature film, which is going to be called Searching for a Show, a pretty well an adaptation of that show that I loved so much at Fringe. So Spaceman is um, going to be finished later this year, and, and, and hopefully we can talk about it in 2022. Hopefully not in a pandemic anymore. So, sounds great. And I'm certainly looking forward to it as well, Dan. And uh, what else can we expect from you in 2021 and going into 2022? Besides what we talked about, what else can we expect from you? I mean, that's pretty good. I think we got, we got the liminal, we got the spaceman played again is uh, the short film I was telling you about that uh, I'm very excited about. And, and, you know, hopefully we can get a feature film going in 2022. That's the goal. So um, like I said, 
looking to get in touch with uh, with folks and and also tell other people's stories as well, mm-hmm. not just my own. And we're certainly looking forward to it as well. We're here with a filmmaker, photographer of Liminal, Dan Abramovich, here on the Mike Weiner Show. Dan, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. And just a few more things. Um, who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Oh, man. Um, hmm. Biggest influence in my career. I can't say that I really have one person. I'm, I'm very grateful to my time at the Canadian Film Center, I suppose. Um, Canadian Film Center, if anybody is in Canada listening, is a really wonderful um, kind of arts incubator in Toronto that I was lucky enough to get into as a part of their um, actors lab. And really what that did is just make me respect craft and understand, you know, what, what's involved in, uh, in, in, in what we do besides the kind of obvious and superficial um, but I, I can't say that there's one person that I found. I, I enjoy many actors. I love how Jim Carrey was able to transition from, you know, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective to Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. I, you know, love the careers of folks like uh, Gary Oldman and Tom Hanks, who can seemingly play anything and any genre. Mm-hmm. Um, and And filmmakers who take risks um i love it when a filmmaker has their own voice like a tarantino or a or a michelle gondry when you can just watch any scene from any one of their movies and 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 respect their authorship but also they can play in any genre at all i love that Hmm. that is amazing i love what you said about jim carrey he's terrific and one of my favorites and um what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point uh, uh, the, I would say that it's, um, not how many times you fall, but how many times you get up, you have to just keep working and keep making stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that's a very good point. Once again, uh, filmmaker, photographer, Dan Abramovici with Liminal here on the Mike Widener show. Dan, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people uh, purchase or check out your works? Oh, thanks so much, Mike. So my website is danabramovici.com. That's D-A-N-A-B-R-A-M-O-V-I-C-I. I'm also on Instagram at danabramovici. So I'm not very well hidden. Uh, folks can reach out to me directly. And uh, if you're going to be in the LA area this Sunday, Dances with Film Festival is a fantastic Academy qualifying film festival and liminal uh, is going to be playing this Sunday at four o'clock at the TLC Chinese Hollywood Theater. And I'm going to be there. So if you're in town, come say hi. We will do so. Once again, Dan, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. We wish you all the best and you've got a great future ahead of you. Thanks so much, Mike. Appreciate you.